just want to do a quick update on some gardening things I've been trying out and experimenting with and it's something that I think will help a lot of people out uh, for a lot of different situations. I left my sunglasses inside. I will remedy that here in a moment. I've been experimenting with a new growing system this year. Um, a self wicking bucket. I used kind of what was available to me in my area. There are a bunch of YouTube videos and different variations of how to do this. I'm very happy with what I've been using. I kind of wanted to give it some time before I discussed it and wanted to try it, put it through its paces and see if it actually worked. And so far, um, successful. Here are three that I made most recently. And I got some more. I'll take you around back to the garden area and show you here in a minute. But this is essentially what we got here um as you can see i got these three tomato plants and they are doing very well that's a black beauty that's a coyote ch uh, cherry tomato and this is a cherokee purple tomato started all these from seeds and as you can see they're just in a tractor supply bucket any five gallon bucket would work for this or any bigger or smaller size bucket would work i have two buckets um, nestled inside each other i leave the handle on the bottom bucket i take the one off the top and as you can see from looking at it, this is just um, landscape fabric, like a weed barrier. This is the cloth one on some of the older buckets that I'll show you in a minute. I use the more uh, woven material that's stiffer. This stuff would work better. Um, if you're in a pinch, you could also use, you know, um, like cotton pillowcases or whatever, as long as you have something to make your barrier. Uh, I'll show you the construction of these here in a minute, but basically this is where you fill up the bottom bucket, which holds about two inches of water. You can see the little overflow hole right there so that you don't have to, like last last night, as you can tell, everything's kind of wet. It rained, and so uh, if you don't have that overflow hole, then this whole thing will just fill up with water and it will drown out your plants, and uh, plants don't like wet feet. This is basically the bucket that I made for myself wicking tubs. Um, I used them primarily this year for tomato plants. They would work probably better for pepper plants or things like that. Tomato plants could probably use a, a bit bigger bucket than a five gallon, but I'll show you in a second. It is working fine for them so far, but I would like a maybe a 20 or 30 gallon tub for them. But So this is all it is. Like I said, one bucket is nestled in another. Get it apart. And uh, it's one big hole, about fist size, maybe three or four inches, circular hole, uh, circular, circular hole. I can't say it, I don't know why, but yeah, you can just use your hole saw, three or four inches, maybe three and a half, be a nice little medium area. Um, a lot of people will put uh, like a basket in here, but I just use the uh, landscape fabric and push it down with my fist from the other side, obviously, and make a little cup and then pack it full of the soil but then i just drilled a bunch of these little quarter inch holes the other ones i'll show you my first ones that i made version 1.0 i uh i used less holes but i used bigger holes um with using the landscape fabric in between it it doesn't really matter soil's not getting through there so whatever size holes you want to use i guess um i just was trying different ones to see if they had any sort of different effect uh thus far i can't tell but uh, we'll see as the growing season continues and then whatever size pipe you're using, I use this little three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe. Um, you want to angle cut the end so that, because this is the end that sits at the bottom, you don't want to cut off your water supply if it's not angle cut. And just do your hole there on the side so that that'll fit in there. And then all this goes right in. And then like I said, you got wherever it may be, uh, you got a hole drilled uh, for the overflow. I did a 38 inch section of landscape fabric and packed it in there put my soil in the very bottom packed it down in there and that acts as a wick that uh that big hole in the bottom to suck up water to the roots just packed it in there worked my way around and then i tuck it i tuck the uh i cut off excess and then i tuck it around here like this i use a little tape to hold it in place and then when i sandwich it in the bucket as you see um or have seen or will see uh, it makes it a nice, just kind of a clean look. Uh, makes it look a little better, I think. So um, let's take you down to the garden and show you my original models and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so here we are in the garden area that I built. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now. I put down landscape fabric all along here. Um, it makes it so much easier for cleanup. I can just leaf blow it and 
keep it clean. I can kneel down on it. I don't have to worry about getting all dirty and stuff like that. So I'm really happy with that. It's working really well. Um, but as you can see right here, these are my original buckets. These are the ones I first, very first made, my first shot at it. Um, they are camouflage buckets right now. That is because using white buckets is not a good idea for stuff like this because it can develop algae and stuff like that. I didn't think about that. I just purchased a whole bunch of white buckets from Tractor Supply and then after the fact I was like, oh no, bad idea. So I just used some spray paint I had and it just so happened I had just enough to do brown and black on all of them. So that's what I did to fill up the gaps and it's fine, whatever. Uh, it might get a little hot, but that's fine. Um, red or blue buckets would probably work the best or orange, but these are all food grade and that's kind of what I want to stick with. So if you can find food grade like the red buckets from Tractor Supply, those are food grade, um, they'll work well. So use a colored bucket, not white. But as you can see, uh, it's working really well. Uh, the tomato plants are doing quite quite nice. These are just some different PVC that I had. These were for electrical uh, use that I had laying around. So just again, using what I had. And you can see I used the woven fabric for these ones. It's, it is working fine, as you can see. Uh, I think the cloth one's easier to manipulate and deal with, and I like having the woven one down here. Um, but I was kind of piecing it all together. Um, but yeah, these, these tomato plants are, are growing just fine. Uh, I did not prune these this year like I normally would. You see I got a little tomato going on right here and uh, some more to follow. I just, uh, I was kind of doing like a, my own version of a Florida weave, just kind of just something to trellis them up, just keep them in place. Probably would have done something a little different, but these are all indeterminate varieties, so they are just going and going and going so i'm having to like back weave them through and all kinds of nonsense and as you can see here got a little cucumbers so i'm growing cucumbers in these as well um got a nice little cucumber hanging on right there uh these when i planted all my stuff out here it was a time because uh it was when we had a random three days it got cold after the frost was supposed to be passed and all that stuff i was supposed to be good for my growing and um, things dropped and stuff started dying off lost my uh, my watermelons and all kinds of stuff so some of my stuff's been stunted a little bit and had a hard time getting back up and going but uh, we're getting there we're getting there so I've, some of it I've had to replant and we're dealing with that as we got to but um, so far not not bad it's it, again proving that these buckets are working fine this uh, lemon cucumber right here is just uh, just going crazy I've just been weaving it in this and uh, it's starting to starting to produce some little lemon cucumbers and uh, really excited if you've never had those they are fantastic that's a market more i planted a crookneck squash here that i'm just gonna let kind of grow along the ground here is another crookneck squash that is uh you know this was one of the stunted ones so it's just having a hard time rebounding i'm gonna give it some more time see what it does this is a tomatillo doing its thing got a bunch of blossoms on it so we'll see what happens here and uh it's just doing whatever some bush beans i put two in this pot one in this pot i just kind of want to see what they'll do um see how they produce and all that good stuff but uh then over there this is just onions and two buckets of potatoes that i grew this all in all i'm really happy with these five gallon buckets i think they are a a good solution for somebody that has bad soil like I do here. It's just nothing but clay. So really anything raised bed or the like is the way to go. And these you can kind of expand as you want. And especially like me, I'm trying to learn where I can grow in this yard and where I can't. Um, so it's nice because I can move them around. Uh, at the end of the growing season, I can dump them out. I got my compost over here. I can mix it back in with it, uh, get some fresh soil in them every year, amend as I need to. And if something gets sick, you can yank it out. It's not a problem. Also, uh, if you are somebody that's limited in space, uh, an apartment, uh, got a balcony, something like that, or a small yard, these are a great option for you. You don't have to worry about a big, great, big old raised bed that you can't move once you fill it and all that kind of stuff. And the money, especially with wood prices right now, raised beds are expensive. I just think they're all in all a really good option and I think they'd be beneficial for a lot of reasons. But again, uh, for tomatoes, I would like a little bigger bucket, but I mean, it is growing tomatoes, so I can't really, I can't complain but so much. But um, I would like to get, say, uh, out here where I live, there's 55 gallon um, food grade drums. There's a guy that sells those for 25 bucks a piece. If 
you cut them in half, you have a 22 and a half gallon, or I don't know, I can't do math. I think 22 and a half gallon bucket that you can make a self wicking bucket and then that would be perfect for tomatoes and it's like 12 and a half dollars. So all in all, I'm really happy with these though. And I'll expand as, as I need to and get bigger buckets if I need to. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, the proof is here. It, they do work, they're working well and I've got no complaints. Everything's growing healthy that is growing other than when it got stunted by the weather. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. You don't have to do it the way I did it. This was just, you know, the the buckets were $3 a piece. So that's six bucks plus maybe some PVC if you don't have it laying around. And then the ground cover, I mean, you can be into one of these buckets for, you know, 10 bucks a piece probably. And you can't get a five gallon grow bucket that's food grade and all that for 10 bucks a piece. It's self watering, you know, I don't know. I just like it because I can, not worry about it for a couple days if it hasn't rained. I can go away for the weekend, come back home, and my stuff isn't all dead. I don't have to have somebody take care of it. So it's it's really nice for that peace of mind. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope uh, hope it gave you something to think about. And uh, happy gardening unto you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Like and subscribe.